Now we turn to Syria. On Syria, quote, in Syria we'll support the opposition that rejects the agenda of terrorist networks. What does that mean? Despite promise after promise, the administration has refused to provide aid to the moderate opposition forces in Syria who are committed. My friends, it was two years ago when the President of the United States said, it's not a matter of whether Bashar Assad will leave office, it's a matter of when. It was over two years ago at the Senate Armed Services Committee that then Secretary of Defense Panetta and the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff said in answer to my question, said, sir, it is inevitable. It is inevitable that Bashar Assad will leave office. Does anybody believe that now? So our failure to help the Free Syrian Army over time was negated and overwhelmed by the presence of 5,000 Hezbollah sent in by the Iranians, the Iranian Revolutionary Guard, plane load after plane load of weapons that now land at the Damascus airport from Russia while they're loaded onto Russian-built helicopters and barrel bombs, which are explosives packed with all kinds of nuts and bolts and other metal, are dropped out of those helicopters on men, women, and children. But not to worry, not to worry, because the chemical weapons are leaving, apparently, according to the President, because he said, American diplomacy, backed by the threat of force, is why Syria's chemical weapons are being eliminated, and we will continue to work with the international community to usher in the future the Syrian people deserve, a future free of dictator, terror, and fear. The chemical weapons he's hailing is a success. How much has it been accomplished? The Syrian government has delivered less than 5% of its deadliest chemical weapons agents to international authorities so far. L.A. Times story, I quote, Syria unlikely to meet deadline on its deadliest chemical agents. President Bashar Assad's government has delivered less than 5% of its deadliest chemical weapons agents. The deadline is next week. So even, even this claim about chemical weapons being removed, that does not scrutiny. But far, far, far more important, far more important, I say, is that if we got rid of the chemical weapons that Bashar Assad had, that would not change the equation on the ground. I am sure that a Syrian mother cannot differentiate very well if their child is killed by a chemical weapon or a barrel bomb or is starved to death as 120,000 men, women, and children have met that fate. It's unbelievable. And now we are watching a charade to take place in Geneva, and that, and that, of course, is turned into farce. And anybody that believes that Bashar Assad is going to willingly leave office when he is winning the battle on the ground, obviously has no idea of the nature of Bashar Assad. So, again, the slaughter goes on, and one of the huge aspects of this happens to be the fact that it is no longer a civil war. I would remind my colleagues, this conflict began because in homes, there were some children that wrote graffiti, anti-Assad graffiti on the wall. They were rounded up by Assad's police. They were tortured and beaten. And that began an Arab Spring in Syria. And, and that spread throughout the country and now has spread throughout the region. As I just said, Iraq-Syria border is now al-Qaeda now controlled by them. The Iranians are all in with 5,000 Hezbollah. Lebanon is destabilized. Jordan is overwhelmed by refugees. Turkey even is under strain. Hundred and some thousand refugees are even in Kurdistan. 
and it has turned into a regional conflict and one which sooner or later will, will finally erupt into a major, major conflict which is going to affect the United States of America. The President of the United States may want to leave the Middle East alone, but I can assure my colleagues the Middle East will not leave America alone. Look at the statement just today by our Director of National Intelligence who said that al-Nusra, an affili affiliate of al-Qaeda, is planning attacks on the United States of America. And the President said, finally, let's remember that our leadership is defined not just by our defense against threats, but by the enormous opportunities to do good and promote understandings around the globe. And no one is better positioned to take advantage of those opportunities than America. I couldn't agree more. But when the United States is viewed by the world, particularly the Middle East, as weak, withdrawing, no longer involved or trying to disengage, then I'm not sure that we can have the effects that the President outlined in his State of the Union speech. I think it's very clear that a seminal moment, as far as the entire Middle East is concerned, when the, United, when the President of the United States said that because the Bashar Assad had crossed the line in the use of chemical weapons. There was indisputable evidence that 1,400 men, women, and children had been killed in a chemical weapon attack, attacks, and he then said that we were going to have to enact strikes against Bashar Assad in Syria. Our, uh, a few days later, our Secretary of State, in one of the more incredible statements that I've ever heard, said, yeah, but the strike will be, quote, unbelievably small. I'm not making that up. He said the strike would be, quote, unbelievably small. That must have really frightened the Syrians when he heard that any military strikes would be, quote, unbelievably small. And then the President of the United States, without informing our allies, specifically the Saudis, according to published reports, took a 45-minute walk with his chief of staff and then decided that he would go to the Congress of the United States for permission or for ratification of any attack he might make. And obviously, that wasn't going to happen. Now, I say to my colleagues, I travel a lot in the Middle East. And I can tell you, and I would even name names, but not on the record, that at that moment, our allies lost confidence. They lost belief in the United States of America. And we are watching countries in the region openly stating, for example, the Saudi Arabians refusing a seat on the National Security Council of the United Nations. They have openly stated, and it's published everywhere, they no longer believe in the United States of America.